Hello, I'm Dr. George Gonzalez. I'm the founder of Quantum Neurology. And today we're going to be demonstrating uh, part one of the three most important corrections for foundation neurological correction. And the most important nerve in the body, in my opinion, for healing is Crown Nerve 10. Crown Nerve 10 is the parasympathetic nerve supply of most of the body. So parasympathetic, if you remember back in school, is for rest, digest, and heal actions of the body. So when we're working with this, I developed a way of testing cranial nerve 10 and other uh, actions and stacking them together so we could have a more complex evaluation and then the opportunity for correction. So we're going to begin by talking about cranial nerve 10 a little bit. Cranial nerve 10 has a few different actions. It has smiling, uh, I'm sorry, uh, swallowing. It has uh, tickling the palate, vocalization, and it also has uh, smile and swallow at the same time. So when we do these specific actions, we want to test against the body's ability to handle these layers of stress. So we begin with an indicator muscle test, and we're checking to see if the nervous system is congruent. And now we're going to add layers of stress. We're going to begin with the simple swallow. We're going to have her swallow, and we see that she's inhibited. And in neurology, we say the word inhibited instead of weakness. You could also say weakness if you're talking about a muscle. But because in quantum neurology, we're testing nerve actions, which includes muscles, but it also includes other things. We use the word in inhibited because that's more representative of what it is. Because you cannot have uh, a weak sensation, for example. So we use weakness to refer to muscles, but inhibition to refer to uh, all other neurological actions. So we... And this takes a little bit of time, and, and without making a correction, if she swallows again and I test, she's still inhibited. So this is, I call that neurological recognition. We want to make sure that the nervous system is recognizing how to correct itself. Her body isn't making a connection on how to correct itself, because if I test her again and she swallows, she's still weak. So we use light therapy. And this is a, a light device that I developed specifically for quantum neurology. It has red and infrared lights, and each uh, button has different patterns of light therapy that we use with the red and infrared. Now, I'm going to activate this, have her swallow, and now I'm gonna light up the brain stem, and I'm gonna have her exercise her action, neurological action. So, I'm going to ask her to swallow a couple more times. And now we will test again and swallow. And she's holding strong there. I'm trying to get some saliva. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we could use water. We could have them drink some water. And I'd actually prefer to have the patient drink through a straw because now you're using that suckling reflex. You're also using all the mus muscles associated with. Uh, sucking liquids into the, into the mouth and swallowing at the same time. So that's leveling up the isolation of the specific swallow actions. Let's talk about a few other actions we have here. We have, uh, I, when I don't have water available or if the patient has dry mouth, I will use this next one, which is tickle the roof of your mouth with your tongue. Now, go ahead and open wide so everybody can see. So she's moving her tongue back and forth and we can also, uh, and she's inhibited there, but we can also add vocalization while she's doing that. So tickle the roof of your mouth and say, ah, ah. and she breaks down, okay? So these are cranial nerve nine and 10 actions. And so we will have her, uh, light therapy is on the brainstem. The brainstem is right in the back of the, the head. It's GV16 for those of you that know your acu acupuncture points. And so I have the light on the brainstem and now I have her repeat the neurological action. Uh, <clears throat> so she's tickling her palate, vocalizing, and it just takes a few seconds, and we can have her redo this test. Uh, and she's rock solid there. Now, another test that we do for cranial nerve 10 to add layers of complexity to, to testing that nerve is we have her smile, like show your teeth, and maintain the smile and then swallow while maintaining the swallow. Go ahead. And that's inhibited. Notice how each one is inhibited separate from one another because each nerve action, it works 
on its own. So this is what we call an arc, an autonomic reaction. Her body automatically starts discharging stress and we see yawning, we see people wiggle, we see people uh, will have chills up and down their spine. Those are called autonomic reactions. A little sweaty. <laughs> A little sweaty too. Uh, that happens as well. So anything that happens automatically without our intellectual control is called an autonomic reaction. So when those things are happening, when we're doing things to patients, we associate that with parasympathetic healing in the nervous system. I feel that this is how the nervous system discharges non-physical stress. So let's walk through these one more time. We have crown nerve 10 actions the rest, digest, and heal actions of the body. The initiation of digestion starts in the mouth. So that initiates the digestive tract, all the parasympathetic actions for healing. So let's have you swallow, and she's strong now. Let's have you tickle the roof of your mouth. Excellent. And let's have you uh, smile and swallow at the same time. And she's now corrected on all those actions. Now on top of this, we can add more layers of stress. So when we talk about the parasympathetic nerve supply, remember parasympathetic is cranial sacral. Cranial sacral, so we want to add actions of layers of stress on top of this. And we call this zipping up the nervous system. So what we're going to do is on each one of these actions, let's start with the tickling the palate. It's the easiest to do without uh, liquids and things. Yes. See, tickling the palate, vocalizing. I want her to contract her pelvic floor muscles and curl her toes, tighten her toes like she's making a fist with her toes. And notice she breaks down again. The reason she breaks down is because we added layers of stress on top of the neurological action we were evaluating. And now I'm going to light up the brain stem and have her do those actions again. Tickle the palate, pelvic floor, curl the toes, and just a few seconds with light therapy while repeating the nerve-specific exercises. Go ahead. And pelvic floor tighten. And she's able to maintain that. So the way we strengthen the nervous system is layering stress on top of itself and strengthening the nervous system. It's kind of like saying, well, if you could rub your, your belly and pat your head and hop on one foot and sing happy birthday, the more of these layers of neurological stress you could have, the, the more complex actions your nervous system can handle. And when we ever do a correction, we want to make sure the cranial nerve 10 and its actions are working in, in, in unison so that the body can heal itself no matter what part of the body is being stimulated.